Imagine you're a cat eating salmon when you turn into the biggest, strongest cat anyone has ever seen. On day one, I spawned in a jungle village as a little kitty cat. Oh, I'm a, I'm a kitty. I'm a little kitty cat. I only have three hearts while I'm still young, so I have to be pretty careful. As a cat, though, I can sprint super fast. Look at me go! Run, Bronzo, run! Wait, who are you? I'm your owner. You and all seven of your siblings, like Goldo and Silvero here, and Kubo somewhere being mischievous. Owner? I can't be tamed. I sprinted away from this strange villager who thinks I'm his pet. If anything, he should be my pet. Later that day, I felt a rumbly in my tumbly. You must be hungry. You should go fishing for salmon. Well, as a cat, I don't like water. So I got the fish the old fashioned way. My so-called owner gave me some sticks and a string to make a fishing rod, and I was able to catch a few fish in the pond. Yeah. At the end of the day, I was pretty tired. So I cuddled up next to my owner in the bed and slept for the night. On day two, I woke up and gave my owner a present. Some string. Here you go. Something to play with while I'm gone today. Bye. When I went outside, I saw a creeper. Ew, what's a creeper doing here? Get out of here, I hate creepers. And stay out. After that, I decided to explore. So I went into the jungle and started scratching at some trees to get wood and make wooden tools like an ax and a pickaxe. While I was out, I ran into the coolest cat I had ever seen. Oh my gosh, that cat's so big and strong looking. Hey lady, can you train me? You, <laughs> you're but a kitten. You're too little and naive to learn the ways of the jungle. Go back to your village, runt. Ooh, that really stings, but okay. By that time, it was night, and I arrived back to the village to see a surprise. Oh my gosh, what is happening? Look at all those phantoms. Who's not sleeping? Is it you? I'll take care of them. I'm not as weak as that tiger said I was. There was a bunch of zombies in the village too, so I killed them all and scared off the phantoms. Run away, phantom, run away. And it felt good to prove the tiger wrong. I went to bed feeling like I could take on the jungle after all. On day three, I woke up to a huge explosion. There was a mutant creeper wrecking havoc in my village. What the heck? The mutant creeper is destroying everything, killing all the villagers, animals, and other cats. Kubo, no! It was time for me to step up and defend my home. I knew I could do it because creepers are scared of cats. <laughs> You think I am so simple to be scared of you? The mutant creeper made an explosion right in front of me, throwing me back into the jungle. Oh my gosh, ow, that hurt. Oh, look how many hearts I have. Now I was mad and I needed to prepare for battle. So I mined up some stone and made stone tools and a stone sword. Now I am ready, but I need to heal. When I ate some salmon, I grew stronger as well. Only two more hearts. I ran back to my village, ready to fight, but everything was gone. All that remained was my owner and some of his house. Bronzo, you survived. Yeah, no thanks to you. I swore then and there that I would take revenge on that mutant creeper for destroying my home and killing my family. I'm going to get stronger and I know who can help me achieve my goals. That tiger from earlier. On days four through five, I left the village and got to business, building a base of my own in the jungle. I built it high up in the trees since I can climb trees as a cat and the mutant creeper definitely couldn't get to it. At one point, I fell out of the tree. Oh my gosh, no. Oh, I'm still alive. I didn't take any fall damage at all. I guess cats really do land on their feet. I went mining for materials in a nearby cave, finding iron to make some armor and better tools. While I was out, I kept an eye out for the tiger, but she was nowhere in sight. Ah, I guess she's off hunting some deer or something. I returned to my base and made a lot of furnaces and I smelted my iron ore to make an ax, sword and pickaxe. On day six through nine, I decided to bring some animals up to the base. So I explored the jungle until I found some sheep and chickens. Ooh, chickens. I'd kill you, but I don't have time. Come on, sheep. Let's go back to the treehouse. I led the sheep back to my base and sheared them for the wool to make a cat bed. I also built a scratching post. Then I went out again to try to find the tiger. I hear growling, that must be her. No, those are wolves. They attacked me and I fought them off and managed to defeat them. Yeah, who's not tough enough for the jungle now? Suddenly, the tiger jumped out from the bushes. She said she'd been watching me. 
I'm impressed with your progress, Runt. You show promise. Uh, my name's Bronzo. I'll train you, Bronzo. But first, you must grow stronger. The tiger told me about some pyramids to the east that should offer a good challenge. So I left to find it. It was too far to reach in one day. So when night came, I had to fight some spiders. At least I got some string out of this. I love string. I got hungry, so I fished in a pond and caught some cod and a few salmon. Mmm, this hits the spot. I bet cooked fish would not be this delicious. I wasn't sure I was headed the right way, so when I ran into some ocelots, I asked them for directions. Thank you. Well, if it's adventure you want, you can hang out with me. You got a name? No problem. I'll call you Simba. My new friend Simba and I found the pyramids pretty quickly, but we decided to get some rest and tackle it in the morning. On day 10, I had a dream that I was visited by the mutant creeper. <laughs> you think you can defeat me? Foolish little kitty. Nothing can defeat me. I am chaos. It explained that he will destroy every village one by one, then blow up the world. I woke up for days 11 through 13, nervous about what the creeper told me, but I had to focus. If I want to defeat him, I have to take it one step at a time, starting with this pyramid. Before going into the pyramid, Simba and I battled husks that were lurking outside. Simba even used cactuses that were growing around the pyramid to hurt the husks. It was time to enter the pyramid, and inside was a giant husk boss. Don't tell me what to do. We fought and the husk boss was crazy powerful. I couldn't even get inside to hit him. He just threw me back. Then I had a crazy idea. I could mine out the top of the pyramid and dump the pool of lava on him. Burn you husk. Wow, it, it really worked. I looted the pyramid, finding all kinds of treasure, like diamond horse armor, saddles, and gunpowder. I even found bouncy boots that gave me a jumping boost. Wow, look how high I can jump. I wanted to become stronger, but I needed a team. So I started traveling to all kinds of biomes and villages, inviting all cats to stay with me at my base. Now with all these cats here, I needed to expand the base. So I made different little houses for my new friends. As I was working on the base, the tiger came back to speak with me. You have done well, little kitten. You have completed all the tasks I have given you, and you're ready for your next adventure in your training. But first, get some rest. My master was right. I felt stronger and anxious for what I must do next, but I was tired. So I went up to the top of my base, laid down in my cat bed, and slept for the night. For days 14 to 16, I went to go get my next challenge from the tiger. You must tame a villager. A villager? How do I do that? That is for you to discover. So I set off to find a stupid villager and tame it. But on the way, I was ambushed. The creepers weren't scared of me. This must have something to do with the mutant creeper. But I was also able to kill them all, one way or another. I hope their deaths send a message to their boss not to mess with me. After all that, and a bit of wandering, I finally found a village. Now to trick them into being tamed. This shouldn't be too hard. They are dumb villagers after all. Just be cute and they will fall for it. Yeah, this will totally work. I tried taming them the same way humans tame cats, by crouching and waiting for them to approach me. And to my surprise, it worked. I was approached by a villager. Well, aren't you just the cutest little thing? I promise, if anything bad happens to you, I will protect you with my life. I'm gonna name you Jerry. My name's actually... <sighs> On day 17 to 20, I brought my human to the base and showed the tiger. I'm impressed with how fast you were able to tame this villager. My tiger master told me that now my real training begins. <laughs> Jerry, I chew with your mouth closed. I had to hunt songbirds, which I felt was pointless since cats don't even eat birds in Minecraft. I had to survive the snake pit. Snakes? Why does it always have to be snakes? There were so many, but I killed them all. 
And my last task of the day was to resist drinking a bucket of milk, which was pretty easy since cats shouldn't drink cow milk. Don't feed your cats milk, kids. On days 21 through 23, I wanted to use my time away from the tiger to upgrade my armor. So Simba and I are off to the caves to look for diamonds. While we were in the mines, we found plenty of materials, but no diamonds yet. All of a sudden, Jerry randomly teleported to me and then fell down the ravine. Ah, what the heck? Are you hurt? How did I get here? I jumped down the ravine effortlessly, since I'm a cat, so that I could help him heal. But I'm glad he didn't die. Oh no, you can never leave my side until I make you a home. Sounds like Minecraft logic to me. I get to work on making him a villager living area in my treehouse. I connect his place to my top level. I make Jerry's area complete with a cauldron for a toilet, a regular bed, and even a farming area. So if he ever gets hungry, he can farm up some grub. Thank you for the home, master. Here, I made you this cookie out of cocoa pods as a gift for your kindness. Silly human. He should know cats shouldn't eat chocolate. So naive. But I took the cookie to make him feel happy. Thank you, uh, but stay here. And stop Stop teleporting to me, please. Oh, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> I also wanted to make a giant cat statue near the base so that if any cats walked by, they will know the area is safe here. I started by clearing off some of the jungle bushes, trees, and bamboo, and used the wool I got to make the legs of the cat. On days 24 through 28, Simba and I were starting to get concerned about the tiger not being back by now. So we went out looking for her. But all of a sudden, Simba got attacked by an eagle. The eagle grabbed Simba and flew him away. I had to do what cats are best at, catching birds. So I chased it and when it was distracted, I was able to slay the bald eagle. Simba. Are you okay? I gave Simba some fish, but before he could eat the meal, a chicken showed up and grabbed Simba. I don't even know how, but it ran away. What the, what was that? How did you do that? The chicken ran off, so I had to chase it to save Simba, but I was too late. I got hungry and I couldn't run fast enough and I lost track of it. I promise I will find you Simba and bring you back home. For days 29 through 33, I searched high and low for Simba, asking anyone I ran into if they had seen a chicken holding an ocelot. <laughs> After a lot of searching, I ran into some more creepers. Die, creeper! And a few of them were even charged up. I was forced to fight them. Oh yeah? Watch me. I was able to defeat them. And a bit disappointed that the mutant creeper hasn't sent stronger foes for me to fight. I don't think he knows who he's messing with. As I continued my search, I heard some commotion coming from a field nearby. So I ran right to it, hoping it was Simba. It wasn't. It was a lethal chicken killing other chickens. I was shocked. My curiosity got the best of me and I had to ask what it was doing. Hey man, what's your deal? Killing your own kind. I was raised in a GMO farm. Always envious of free-range chickens. So when I got out, I swore to destroy all the privileged chickens. Weird flex, but okay. Anyway, have you seen a chicken holding an ocelot? I have actually. It went towards the GMO farm. The lethal chicken showed me the way to his farm. For days 34 through 37, we made it to the GMO farm. I could see all these caged chickens inside, along with foxes, cats, and ocelots. One of them had to be Simba. He's gotta be in there. Let's go. Not so fast. The lethal chicken had something to tell me. I have to tell you about the people who run this place. They keep chickens cooped up with creatures all around them that want to eat them because they think it makes their meat taste better. They even burn chickens alive to get cooked meat. That's not right. No one should be treated like that. I'm going to free all the chickens and animals in here. And how do you plan on doing that? The plan was simple. It started as a stealth mission and we both just had to break all the cages without getting caught. But to no one's surprise, we still got caught by some pesky humans. Get him. Get him. The humans started attacking me. I had to fight them. But while I was distracted, the lethal chicken started killing everything in there. Even the chickens, the ocelots, and the foxes. They'll free you from your misery. I knew I shouldn't have trusted you and then jerry teleported to me what i thought i told you to stay at the base sorry i got worried 
I was mad at Jerry, but he came at the right time. He was able to negotiate with the other villagers and stall them while I broke Simba free. I guess he wasn't useless after all. Here, have a cookie for helping save Simba. On days 38 to 40, we all returned home, but the tiger was still not back. I told my human to stay while Simba and I continued searching for my master. After scouring the jungle, we finally found her and she sounded like she was in trouble. She was being attacked by a feral wolf. As I joined in to fight, the wolf realized that we outnumbered it, so it gave up and fled. That was awesome! But who was that? Many wolves have been encroaching on my territory, and I had to show it who the biggest predator is in the jungle. I offer to help her with these wolves, and she tells me of a wolf den not far from here that she was planning on attacking, and that I am welcome to join her. Days 41 to 43, we found the wolf den. But who was there? But none other than the mutant creeper! Bonzo. Now's our chance to kill this freak. The tiger and I tried fighting it, but we didn't stand a chance, and the mutant just started mocking us. <laughs> you really thought this was a pathetic excuse for a tiger could help you beat me? I'll destroy a jungle just like I destroyed this wolf's den. The mutant creeper started to leave. Do, do, do we go after it? No, I did not realize we were up against such a powerful enemy. She then tells me to train in the jungle's dungeon area while she finds out if the feral wolf left before the creeper attacked his den. I was pretty sure the mutant creeper would have killed it, leaving no survivors, but my master wanted to be sure. And with that, we went our separate ways. On days 44 through 49, I arrived to the jungle dungeon area, eager to learn and grow stronger. I fought all kinds of mobs and got amazing rewards, like diamond armor double jump boots. Now I could jump a second time in the air, kind of like Mario. Wahoo! I fought all kinds of skeletons and zombies and checked every single chest I could find. There were small rewards and also great rewards. The fights sometimes were easy, usually against the zombies, but the skeletons had bows and arrows, so they were a little harder to avoid. After the dungeon, I noticed my weapons were a bit worn down, along with my armor. I needed to go mining for diamonds so my tools could match my boots, as well as a whole new diamond armor set. Luckily, I found some and got crafting right away. Now I was all decked out with diamond everything. I was back at the base on days 50 through 53, and I continued to build the cat statue, finishing the body, head, and tail. Now it just needs some different colors. It's going to look so great when it's finished. After that, I continued my training with the tiger. But before we could get started, the feral wolf jumps out and deals a deadly blow to my master. No! The wolf had killed my master, and for the first time, I felt weak. But I had to fight and protect my base. It was a difficult fight. The wolf was an amazing fighter, and as I was on the verge of losing all my health and dying, the feral beast stopped the fight. I was too weak to fight. I let it leave, knowing it'll be back soon. But I was in grief from my master's death. I decided that I needed to give her a proper funeral. On days 54 to 58, I made a shrine for my tiger master. <coughs> Only that I will finish what you started. I will make you proud. Everyone grieved for the tiger, even the foxes and the snow leopards. Even one of her old masters came to the funeral, a cat much like myself, and he had news for me. I live with the witch and have access to potions. Here, take this. The cat gave me a splash potion of poison too that would help me with my fight against the feral wolf. Avenge our master's death. I will, you can count on me. I thanked him for the gift and I felt invigorated. I will take down that feral wolf. For days 59 through 62, I started my search for the feral wolf, who was not easy to find. I searched the tundra, the desert. I even looked in the ocean, but no luck. Finally, I searched a cave under the jungle where I found him hiding in the shadows. Yes, I have you ugly beast. I took a few swings at him and he hit me pretty hard. Then I remembered the potion. I tossed it at him, but he wasn't dead yet. Come here. Ah, and die! And just like that, the wolf was gone from this world. But it had reminded me of my true mission, to slay the mutant creeper. I set off back home to prepare more for my final battle with the creeper. 
On days 63 through 66, I was heading back to the base when I saw a bunch of charged creepers. Simba came out of the jungle and found me, and we started fighting the creepers together. What are you doing here? Well, now that you're here, you can help, but leave one alive. We destroyed almost all of them, but Simba dug a hole to trap the last one with a cactus inside the hole. Great work, Simba. I interrogated it, trying to find out where the mutant creeper's base is. You don't know what I'm capable of. It did have a point though. I still only have five hearts. I need a way to protect myself. I need to enchant my armor to make up for my small amount of hit points. I then collected some tradable items in my chests and set off to trade with the villagers. You be a good boy, Jerry, okay? On days 67 to 70, I made it to a village, ready to make trades. I traded crops from a farmer, strings with a fisherman, and leather with a fletcher. Now, I have emeralds. I found a librarian who sells enchanted books, but it wasn't a really good book and wouldn't help me with my armor. Ugh, magnet? That's not an armor enchantment. You're right. Thanks, mister. Before I left the village, I went up to a fisherman and begged for some fish. Because I'm a cat, which he gave me a lot of. This will save me a lot of fishing trips. I then made it back home and found Simba. We have a lot of grinding to do. On days 71 through 74, Simba and I left the base to find Endermen and collect Ender Pearls. They were pretty easy to find, but killing them was difficult. Plus, it's not often they drop pearls, so we were only able to collect some after fighting tons of them. Okay, now we have the pearls, we need blaze powder. Simba tells me that he made friends with the witch's cat while I was away, and they've been teaching him how to make potions, and they gave him blaze powder for some reason. Well, that saves us a lot of time. We crafted the eyes of Ender and used them to try to track down a stronghold. After what seemed like forever, one of the eyes finally dropped down, leading us to a stronghold. We found it! It was getting late, so Simba and I made a little dugout to rest for the night. We were going to need it for what happens next. For days 75 to 70, Simba and I started digging down to the stronghold. We did it. Good job, Simba. Once we found it, there were creeper minions waiting for us inside. Not these guys. Let's do this. I couldn't let them destroy the enchanted books I was after, but they were pretty easy to kill, so they never even got close to the library. <laughs> Good job, Simba. Simba and I make a great team killing these stupid little minion creepers. Oh, good job, Simba. After killing them all, we finally made it to the library. We gotta find books that can enchant my armor. Where's a chest? Ooh, a chest. We found a bunch of different types of enchanted books. Blast protection three, that's what I need. All right, any more chests in here? Uh, Multi-shot, that's pretty good. Blast protection two, nice. With the enchanted books we needed, we headed back home. Back at the base on days 79 through 84, I made an anvil and enchanted my diamond armor with blast protection and enchanted my bow too. This is exactly what I needed. Now the mutant creepers explosions won't hurt me as much. All right. Simba also suggested that I go see the witch and her cat in the south. She probably has some potions that'll help me protect my health too. That's a great idea. But first, I need to finish something. It was time I complete the cat statue. I started by collecting brown materials like mushrooms and concrete powder. Then it was time to place them down, making an enormous cat in the jungle. Now this truly is a cat sanctuary. On days 85 through 89, I made it to the witch's hut and asked the witch for help against the mutant creeper. You have to prove yourself worthy of my potions. It would be a waste giving them to someone who has no hope of defeating the mutant creeper. I took on her challenge and went through a series of tests, like parkouring through the forest, catching salmon by swimming, and I had to also catch a rabbit. Those things are super quick, but I did it, and I passed all of her challenges. You have successfully finished all my challenges. I am impressed. She gave me rewards, some potions to help me with my battle against the mutant creeper, like regeneration two and a splash potion of harming. She also did a magic spell and it turned me into a monster cat. Whoa, look how awesome I look. I have six more hearts. I thanked her for all she has given me and headed back home. 
I was on my way back home for days 90 through 93 when I passed by some more creeper minions and the creeper started rushing towards me. We fought, but I kicked their creeper butts. How uncivilized. I even killed all the charged creepers that were on their way to my base. But then Jerry teleported to me. Jerry, what are you doing here? Not again. Sorry, I was getting lonely. One of the creepers grabbed Jerry and started running away with him. But before I could chase it, more creepers came up to me, ready to explode. No, ah, Jerry, Jerry, ow, ow. I lost Jerry. Now things just got personal. On days 94 to 96, I made it back to the base and told Simba that Jerry was taken by the creepers. We need to get him back. Simba stopped me from running off immediately to save Jerry, telling me we need to make some preparations. Simba showed me some of the potions he made. He made a splash potion of slowness and potion of invisibility. This will come in handy. Great job, Simba. As a reward for Simba's hard work, I crafted him some new iron armor and a bow. Here you go, bud. Now we both have ranged weapons so we don't have to get close to the mutant creeper. And with that, we set off in the dead of night, not wasting any time. We looked everywhere for any hint as to where Jerry was taken. We ran into some mobs and tested our new weapons on them. <gasps> Is that a chicken? Die! Ugh. Die! <laughs> the bows worked really well, but I still couldn't resist sinking my claws into my enemies. Great job, Simba. Let's keep moving. We gotta find the mutant creeper's base. On days 97 through 98, Simba and I found a village that has been destroyed by the mutant creeper. So we must be close. We talked to a local to see if they know which way the mutant went. They went towards the mountains, but you don't want to go there. I thanked the villager for their help and we went on our way through the mountains. I have a feeling we're getting close. As we are scaling the mountains, we run into a creeper minion hiding in a structure. It looked scared. Hey, you okay? I know I'm a cat, but usually you creepers attack me anyway. It turns out the lone creeper wants to help us. How do I know this isn't a trick? They explain that they want the mutant creeper dead too, and I look strong enough to take him on, but I'll need immunity to explosions. They tell me that this dormant creeper spore is in the ice spikes to the north, and close by, I'll find the mutant creeper's base. Your help is appreciated. Uh, me too, buddy. Simba and I headed north to find the ice spikes. For days 99, we reached the ice spikes. That must be where the spore is. The whole place was covered in icy creepers, more powerful and deadly than a charged creeper. Whoa! Oh my gosh. Okay. Ah! <laughs> they are crazy. We were able to defeat them all and enter the structure to find the dormant creeper spore and equip it. I feel stronger already. We stepped back outside where there was more icy creepers. I used this opportunity as a test and I let the creeper explode right in front of me. And when it did, I took no damage. Whoa, look, it did nothing to me. I was ready. We just had to find the mutant creepers base. Finally, on day 100, we found the base. Not until everyone likes this video, subscribes to the channel if you haven't already, and comment what creature you want to see me do a 100 days challenge on next. Yes, let's go. We went inside, and there was the mutant creeper. Look who's come to beg for mercy. No, I'm here to kill you and save the world. I'm now stopped by a puny little cat. Yes, you will. <sighs> Take this, you mutant freak. Simba and I fought long and hard, and the mutant creeper's high jump and explosions were no joke. This menace had to be stopped. I used my potion of regeneration anytime my health went low. You are just prolonging the inevitable. You will die, cat. But all of a sudden, he was supercharged. I have not my ultimate form. He's gone Super Saiyan! Even his minions were supercharged. We were in trouble now, but thanks to my invisibility potion, he couldn't see me, and I got some arrow shots on him. Where'd you go? Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. You're done for! After a long battle and a lot of explosions, we finally defeated him! Ah! He died!